I was wrapped in a warm swaddle, and a woman with a gentle voice carried me to a window. It was bright and sunny outside. I could see the tops of the trees and buildings. See the snow? It's snowing. See the little white flakes? For me, this is when time began. It is my earliest memory. My mother didn't think I had early memories. Then I described this one. I was a toddler, had pneumonia, and was in St. George's Hospital. It's a memory like the beginning of a song. It's the first notes as the music begins. There have been the verses, chorus, and changes of meter. There have been discords and harmony. And now I fear I'm approaching the end of the song as the music slows and becomes more mm, melancholy. Time is the most valuable thing, but it's not a thing at all. It cannot be bottled, packaged, and mailed as a gift to a relative. We, uh, we crudely try to measure it with clocks and milestones and record its history, but we never know how much of it there is. There was the time my mother let me go to the matinee movie by myself. It was Zorro the Avenger. <laughs> a kind usher gently shook me awake and told me I needed to go home. When I walked outside and saw it was dark, fear shot through me. I ran home. I remember seeing our house with all the lights on, like a steamship in port. I must have slept through a couple of screenings. I had lost track of time. And there was the time I had to sleep on the top of a mountain in a Golden Trout Wilderness. The end of the nearest woods road was 20 miles away. I dug a little trench so I could sleep out of the, the chilling wind. As I laid on the ground, I looked at a sky filled with stars so bright, it, it made me feel I was floating amongst them. It felt like time did not exist. And there was the time I held the hand of a woman seated in a car well off the roadway. She was critically injured. Don't speak. You need to take deep breaths and conserve your energy. How is my husband? He's fine. He's waiting for us to take you to the hospital. And she smiled. And she closed her eyes and died. In those few moments, we had a lifetime of friendship. As I was walking into my office building, a coworker approached me. Hey, Carl, can I ask you a personal question? Sure, Chris, my life's an open book. Is your cancer in remission? It is. Do you think you will come back one day? Well, once you're told you have cancer, you always feel like it will come back. How do you live with that thought? How do you live with it? What do you mean? Well, we both have the same destiny. The only difference is I have a pink slip saying I might go before you. <laughs> and if you're not spending your time with that in mind, then you should take a look as to how you're living your life. When I retired, my wife gave to me a clock that only shows the days of the week. But she was tired of always having to remind me what day it was. So, so I would know when to take out the garbage or go to, go to my guitar lesson. Uh, I no longer need the constant reminder of the minutes and hours as they pass, but evidently I do need to keep track of the days. 
I don't stand in lines. I don't let people put me on hold. I like meetings to start on time and end on time. I walk out if the meeting becomes a bloviating bull session off topic. I don't let people waste my time. It's too precious. I try not to waste other people's time. Carl, what's the most precious gift you've ever been given? Time. From that gift, there has been a whole cascade of events. Time to grow, time to learn, time with the people I love, time to dance, time to sing, time to cry, time to hold my grandchildren next to a window and ask them if they can see the little white flakes. Under heaven. 